Hey guys, welcome to this uh, walk around video. Uh, I'm going to do for our 2021 Network RV Terrain Tough Off Road Triple Bunk van. It's the 22 foot 6 version um, and we've had it now for a couple of months. But yeah, we just thought we'd do a walk around video um, just highlighting some of the things that we've added to it um, and things that come standard on it. start at the front here, um, pretty much most vans now are coming out with these anyway, so this is the DO35 hitch. Um, this is the first time we've used one of these, we used to have a Treg hitch before on our old soft floor. Really easy, absolutely love how easy these things are. Uh, I'm not going to run through how you use them, but yeah, that's uh, pretty much full articulated, so that's part of the whole off-road thing. Uh, we've got a handbrake here from our 1970s Corolla. Um, also. All our trailer plugs, Anderson plugs, things like that. We've got the big seven and Anderson plug for our power. Um, it comes with a flat seven or whatever, but you just have to obviously change that according to what your car has. We've also got the BM uh, breakaway controller for our um, yeah breakaway control if the trailer comes unhitched. Usual things, we've got chains. We've got the Alco jockey wheel for lifting her up and down. This is also fitted with the Dexter uh, traction control or anti-sway control, whichever you want to uh, call it, which has been really good. Um, we had that fitted, that wasn't standard, uh, and pretty much you drive past a big road train, you'll feel the car more move than you'll, more than you'll feel the caravan sway. It just doesn't move at all, so it's really good. I really um, am quite impressed with that. In saying that, I haven't driven with a caravan without it, but I've heard so many stories about um, speed wobbles and wind sway and things like that, and this doesn't do it at all. So I'm pretty sure that's because of this um, Dexter sway control. So definitely recommend getting that, especially being such a big van. Um, yeah, that's uh, a good thing to have. Um, also, we've got at the front here just a tap, which is good for the kids. They come up and wash their hands all the time and things like that. So that's good uh, little thing that was on there, that's standard as well. Uh, now at the front here, a lot of this is not standard. So we opted for the extended drawbar, which extends at another, I think it's about a foot to a foot and a half worth of extension. So we could fit the toolbox on it, the gas bottles to be externally mounted, because I didn't want to have these in a, in a toolbox, pretty much ruins the point of having a toolbox if you're just going to fill them up with the gas bottle. So we got these on the outside and the stone deflector as well. So this was fitted uh, aftermarket as well. So this wasn't part of the build, but it, got, it did get fitted at uh, Luxury RVs in Rockingham before we picked it up. So that was what they fitted. Uh, so if we come around the other side here of our toolbox, we've got pretty much enough room to have a Weber. It's got this barbecue slide in it. 
and that falls down when you do that. So I've just got the, um, the speed brace for the outriggers, I just leave that in there. It saves me having to go in and out of the tunnel boot when we rock up the site. So yeah, that's good to have, but this obviously wasn't standard as well, so you had to get that put in, so we keep the Weber on there. Moving along, we've got our tunnel boot, which is actually a lot bigger than what we thought it was going to be. So I think, I don't know whether it's a bigger size uh, in the newer builds, but when we first looked at them, they were a, a bit smaller than this. So it does hold a fair bit of stuff. We pretty much put our recycled mat that we put down on the ground, that goes in there. We have five camp chairs on this side, plus a clothesline, a fire pit, collapsible fire pit fits in there as well, plus all the stuff that the kids have. So we've got soccer balls, footballs, all that sort of thing. It's just in this side of the tunnel boot. And there's more on the other side. We'll go through that when we get there. Now we also, this table fits in there as well. We put that, uh, we put the Weber out on this uh, because trying to cook with it in there it doesn't really work. It's a bit tight and crammed. So I pretty much have it mounted out here. And also, the there's a gas bayonet located down here, which works well having the barbecue so close to it. So that's pretty good. Uh, that gas bayonet standard there as well. Uh, keep moving around. We've got the Dometic awning. Um, now this originally wasn't going to be a Dometic awning but then it must have changed during the build and now it is a Dometic awning so we're quite happy with this awning. It works really well. Uh, pretty easy to pack up and set up. Really quite easy. Um, we also added, we've got the clothesline up here that we fitted. So this is pretty much just a nice little mod that you just do yourself. Um, but yeah, really quite easily. Um, if anyone needs any help to do it or whatever, just sing out and I can do another video on um, installing that. But yeah, that's a really good thing to have, especially when you're doing a lot of swimming and things like that. Kids come in, we can put the towels on, they dry in no time. So that's really good. All right, so with these uh, legs on the awning as well, they come down, so they're not, you're not hitting your head on them all the time. These are good just for a one or, night, one or two night stops. Uh, but if you're going to stay for a while, these do come down. So you pretty much just have to just push up here and then you just walk them out. Just like that. And then just adjust accordingly. They've got some tent peg holes, you can put them in the ground. The other thing with this is you can also then put your sides on. So we've got some sides. They're aftermarket, we just bought them um, online. I think they're from RV Sunshades. And they pretty much just click on up here. And then there's a sail track along the middle here. They're pretty much, you just put the big shade on there. So that works well if you're gonna be staying somewhere for you know more than one or two nights. We, we only do that, yeah, if we're gonna stay somewhere for like a week, we'll set it up properly. But anything on an overnight stay, you just leave them attached to the, to the van. If it gets too windy, we just pull the awning away. We don't bother with anti-flap kits or anything like that. Um, if it's gonna be that windy, we're not gonna be outside anyway, so we pretty much just pack it up. Moving along on the outside, we've got some outside speakers, standard once again, a couple of lights, and then you've got all your vents for your cooking, your um, fridge, things like that. You've got your external vents. Out here we've got the pull down table with a light, the light inside which is good. We've, uh, we've found this pretty handy. We do a lot of outside cooking when it's uh, roasts, things like that, barbecue stuff. This is a really good table to prepare it all, cut it up and do things like that. So that's really good, that's come in handy. The other thing as well you can use it for is the TV that's inside, comes with a mount and everything like that. So you can have your TV out here if you wanna watch footy on the weekend or whatever. It's got some power points here, both 12 volt uh, SIG socket and two USB charge points, and also the aerial connections out here as well. So that's a good thing. Plus you've got your 10 amp power point out here. So we use that. We also use our air fryer out here, which is good too. So we've got power right there, so it's really handy. So I didn't think I'd use this that much. I just thought it was a bit of a waste sort of thing, but I really actually quite like this table. So it works really well. So that's good. What else we got on the outside? So the tires that come with this are 235 75 15s. They're a Mudzilla mud tire. So 
and they're not the best quality tyres, but I mean, they do a really good job. We've uh, flogged them a fair bit. We've gone up lots of dirt tracks. We've gone on the beach, things like that. So they're not too bad a tyre. Um, it also has the independent suspension. So we've got coil springs, twin shock um, on each axle. So that's really good. So it's fully off-road. And yeah, they've, uh, they've done well. So there's our independent suspension we've got here. Coil springs, dual EFS shocks on all axles. So that's pretty good. And we've got our, at the back here, we've got our gray water tank, which is 95 liters. And then as we move up the front, these are our two main water tanks. Right, the other things that we got fitted on were these wheel uh, spats or the wheel arch flares here. Uh, they usually just come down to a, a straight finish and uh, we just thought this added a bit more uh, more of an aggressive look and it sort of finished the, the, the wheel area off nicely. So that was an addition that we um, had fitted, but yeah, we really like that. It uh, just adds that bit of I know, extra. It just makes it look a little bit more rounded sort of thing. So we've got the big aggressive tyres and then you can have the aggressive look of the guard. All right, so as well as the extended drawbar, this also comes with a six inch uh, or 150 mil um, frame. So this is as far as the drawbar goes back. It's really quite long, goes all the way back to here. So that's another a good thing uh, for rigidity and strength. A lot of the uh, manufacturers will stop the drawbar right at the top to just be a, just a, an A frame sort of thing like that. Whereas this, they continue it all the way back to here. So I think that's really quite, um, uh, just it's a good strong sturdy design to have it come all the way back and then it's a six inch frame above that as well so it's, it's quite uh, rigid and yeah, quite sturdy so it's a really well built frame these frames are all built in australia uh, in a factory in melbourne so yeah it's good that they're you know they're made locally i suppose and i've been underneath uh to you know soundproof everything and uh put all the protecting on the pipes and things like that and all the welds are really good um, it doesn't look like I've done them it looks like they've actually been done really well so that's a good sign because um, you see a lot of these uh, trailers that are coming in camper trailers and caravans that uh, don't really look that awesome underneath so quite happy with how this is how this has been made all right so the next thing next thing we had installed was this double step uh, now this has been a good and a bad thing good thing obviously because we've got little kids so them to get up and in is a lot easier the only bad thing with this is that we've wiped it out because it sits quite low and we've done a fair bit of off-roading in this thing and she's had a bit of a hit um, but so that's the only bad thing that's nothing to do with obviously the build or anything like that but I just recommend if you are wanting to get a, a double step maybe if you go do a lot of off-roading just stick with the single and maybe just get a pull-out step for kids but I mean I've, I've had to panel beat that straight but it still works so that's the main thing uh, another standard thing is uh, we've got the just the access light here so when you're at caravan parks or out um, in the bush you can sort of see where you've parked up if it's at night um, it's because you've got the one push is blue light and the second push is quite a blinding uh, other light so that's good to have there we've got the KMEC door which is uh, the two screen door which opens like that so that's pretty good um, and you've got the vent down the bottom for the gas and everything like that so that's part of it and we've got the put business in here this is where the poo set lives we don't really need to have a look at that but that's where it is uh, what else have we got in the back here so we've got we've opted for the dual uh, spare tyres on the back because obviously we do uh, full time travelling so I always wanted to have two tyres, we've got two tyres for the cruiser we've got two tyres for the van as well so it's just good to have spares and we've got the bike rack fitted as well I fitted that externally so that's uh, nothing to do with Network RV and then up the top here we've got um, the Safety Dave reverse camera that's uh, factory fit and you get all the uh, head unit and all that sort of stuff to display you've got to fit it yourself so shameless plug all right so around this side we've got our triple bunks now these windows are the extended windows usually they were only about yay long and with the kids inside there we felt that it'd be quite 
claustrophobic sort of thing. So we've opted for the, the extended windows, which I think is really good. It's a good idea. It allows a lot more light to come in as well, so it's not quite dark inside. And yeah, so they're good. Get the extended windows. We also opted for an external shower. Um, it's good because it's got the external light out here as well. And then yeah, so it pretty much just comes with a shower out here. So if you want to wash your feet off, or wash kids if they're a bit feral from the beach or playing in mud or something like that. So that's a really good thing to have. Um, so under here, we've pretty much just got our grey water tank here uh, with a big uh, ball valve on it. Now this doesn't come with any fittings. I've just had to get some from Bunnings and we just put our hose onto here when we um, run it into the, uh, into, into the grey water tank. Like caravan parks and things like that. Um, what else in the water outlets in there as well, uh, or water inlet, sorry, for your mains water pressure. We keep coming down, we've got pretty much just our dual fills for the water. We've got the two 120 litre tanks, so 240 litres all up together. And our hot water system, so this is the uh, Truma gas hot water. And this is the, I think it's got 28 litre holding capacity and it's really good, we've never had a drama with that, so that's gas and electric, and yeah, works really well. The other thing we've got is our two batteries down here, so we've got the two AGM 120 amp hour batteries, and I've also fitted the third one inside to match up, so we've got three 120 amp hour batteries. But yeah, these come standard with the AGMs, there is an option to upgrade to lithium, and there's a lot of other different uh, energy systems that you can incorporate, whether it's the solar panels, the inverters, batteries, all that sort of stuff. So pretty much it, the world's your oyster with what you want to do with your battery setup. So just talk to your dealer or wherever you're getting it through and work out what you want. But that's what we've got. And we've it's it's pretty much the maximum of what we can deal with is what we've got now. So that's that. One thing I uh, will add about the external vents here, um, you see a lot of these camper trailers that have a cover that goes over the vents to protect it. These don't. I'm sort of a... Uh, not a big fan of that because I have actually wiped it out. Um, we've done a bit of uh, tight navigating around some beach tracks and I've collected a pole and pretty much you can see here that I've done a little bit of a scrape but what actually happened is it's actually ripped this cover off. So this is actually a cover for a um, stump for an ant protector for a house stump and I've just trimmed it to size and put it on there so it actually, well, it actually blends in not too bad. But I've also just added this um, bit of angle here just a bit of extra protection so if something does come along here it's going to deflect off that instead of ripping these these covers off so I mean that's that's just a, the way the build is there's nothing you can do about it but I think that's just a good thing to think about all these external stuff if you are going on off-road tracks if you're going to have branches and that sort of stuff scraping along the outside most of it's pretty flush but this obviously they've just got some lips there that can get caught on stuff so a little bit of a trick if you're not aware of it and I didn't think about it until obviously it happened and then went ah. Oh, that should have, shouldn't have been like that. So just little things like that have a look for if you are going to do those off-road tracks. And then we just, yeah, just keep coming up towards the front. Just your power for your mains power pretty much at the caravan park. And then there's an external uh, aerial here if you've got a satellite dish or something like that that you want to pick up. Uh, Foxtel or something like that. And the other side on the tunnel boot here is pretty much just our bits and bobs sort of area. This is where we keep our uh, hoses for the grey water, our hoses for the water inlets. Um, we've got a bucket that we put in here that's got the kids' helmets and all that sort of stuff. We've also got a couple of storage boxes in here. Uh, one that's got some well-used gym equipment in there. We use it every day. Um, top stuff, we've just got, I've got all my um, Mil Milwaukee gear, so I've got rattle guns, drills, angle grinders, all that sort of stuff. Just any basic tools that we use around the, uh, around the place. A couple of axes for when the kids play up. We've got boogie boards, things like that in there and just pretty much all your bits and bobs go in there. Plenty of storage though, a lot more storage than what we thought, so that's good. Uh, we come around to this side of the toolbox. We've pretty much got our, we've got a jerry can in there full of fuel, but behind that we've got a four and a half kilowatt uh, generator. It's massive and it just fits in there. Um, now this has, toolbox has been vented so it's got gas, or uh, well it's got breather vents on the bottom and on the side, uh, as if you were gonna have your gas storage in there, which is good because obviously we've got fuel in here, so it's all vented, it's all safe and everything like that. So that's a good thing to have. But yeah, it fits that generator in there nicely. So we've got a generator, 
the fuel <clears throat> we've also got our all the sides for our awning is stored in here as well so lots of storage which is good now the last thing that we've uh, done up the front here is scooter storage <clears throat> now this was a bit of a collaboration between Kate and myself as to how we're going to store our scooters because we've obviously got the three scooters we've got three bikes on the back we've got kids that like to ride stuff so this is how we've mounted our scooters we pretty much just slid them down the back a couple of eye bolts through the toolbox ratchet strapped them down and these sit in there really tight really good we've gone over some pretty gnarly corrugations and tracks and they haven't really come loose so that's pretty good the only thing is they do get a bit scratched up but the kids treat them like that anyway so it's not a real big deal for us so the other thing we've got is the front window up here now we had that fitted as an option and it comes with this guard that goes over the top so that protects obviously the window from stone chips and things like that so that's really good as well and we haven't had any dramas with the front window whether it leaking or anything like that so really quite happy with that and it adds that extra bit of light to the van as well so when you pull up you can yeah, lift it open and it just creates that nice flow through the van so definitely worth uh, worth it if you're into that and also it increases the bed area a bit I think Kate touched on it on her inside video about how um, yeah it like gives it a bit extra room because you don't have a bed head so really good we like that all right so that was the walk around video of our network RV off-road triple bunk so if anyone wants any more info or if they want any more if you've got any more questions or anything like that just leave a message in the comments below and we'll get back to you or we'll do another video so yeah hopefully uh, this is informative enough but yeah we're really happy with our um, with our purchase we really like this van so uh, I might actually just do another video as well on things that we might have changed or might have improved if we bought it again uh, and also just some of the things that we found that weren't working quite well so stay tuned for that one I'll post another video about that <laughs>